Hi friends, it is not a secret that I often make a variety of switching power supplies, so I regularly have to reel up transformers. Therefore, this video is devoted to the creation of a test device for safe testing of the operation and characteristics of virtually any impulse transformers designed for bridge and half-bridge impulse power supplies. This video will most likely be interesting for a narrow circle of radio amateurs. If you are new to electronics and are successfully launching your first flasher, you want to make something complicated, such as mains pulse power supply, then I strongly recommend not to repeat this. And generally, try not to work with the mains voltage unless you become experienced. Any mistake could cost you your life. This test device was made very quickly, one could say literally in one or two days. In essence, it's a power supply and is designed specifically for my needs and under my criteria. It is possible to adjust the operating frequency of the generator in the range from 13 to 205 kHz. Also available the adjustment of the duty cycle of the pulses and hence the power. The device has increased safety and an adjustable system of protection against short circuits at the output of the under-test transformer. At the power input, there is a cartridge for installing standard incandescent lamps with E27 base to limit the input current of the power source. This is an additional protection in case of an apocalypse or if the basic protection doesn't work out. For power tests, the lamp can be excluded from the circuit and replaced by a short-circuited base from the lamp. It would be possible to put an ordinary switch, which would supply power to the circuit by passing the lamp. But the switch can be accidentally left on, and as a result we can get buff. So, with my choice, I can see and be sure 100% that it is installed in the base lamp or jumper. The low voltage control circuit is galvanically isolated from the mains part because it's fed by a separate low power supply. As the base for assembling is a thick glass fiber, provides a very reliable insulation. All wires used for assembling have high voltage heat resistant silicone insulation. Firstly, it is safe and secondly, during the adjustment work, the insulation will not suffer from an accidental touch with the soldering iron. The device consists of four main blocks, a mains filter with a rectifier and capacitors of half bridge, a power section with transistors and a protection node, a control circuit and a separate power supply for powering the control circuit. In the future, for all high voltage parts, insulating covers will be made. In my case, the device is powered by a galvanic isolation system from the mains. The basis for this design is the generator board for a half-bridge induction heater, which was made for a long time ago. It was a prototype for a video, but you shouldn't search it because that video hasn't been issued out yet. This board made it possible to adjust the frequency and duty cycle of the pulses to adjust the oscillating circuit of the induction heater. The circuit of this node is now in front of you. I must say that the values of some components on the circuit may differ from those on the board. You can download PCB together with the general archive by the link in the description. You can order printed circuit boards at the lowest prices and as soon as possible on the website of the company GLC. Just download the source Gerber file, select the options you need and that's all. The company has many years of experience and can make boards of any complexity, size and number of layers. The company uses only high quality equipment for the production of boards, so the quality is without complaints. A link to the GLC website can be found in the description. With the connection of the block will help this photo. Here we have PWM controller CG3525 and a matching transformer that controls the power transistors and provides a complete galvanic isolation of the control circuit from the high voltage part. And this is full circuit of the test device for pulse transformers. The topology of the circuit is half bridge. As already said, there is a frequency control in the range from 13 to 205 kHz because the transformers will operate in power units of different frequencies and our device must simulate the working conditions for any transformers. The function of adjusting the duty cycle will limit the power of the power supply. In principle, this option will not be used, but let it be. The power supply for the control circuit is 12 volt and provides a current of about 1.5 to 2 amperes. 
What is it used for? After all, for a control unit could be used traditional power systems, for example, a self-feeding winding power systems without transformer, etc. The main reason is that the external power supply unit allows for complete galvanic isolation of the control circuit from the network. This was mentioned at the beginning. And there is second important reason. The fact is that during testing it is often necessary to limit the current at the input of the test device using the previously mentioned lamp. Limiting the current we get a strong voltage drop on all nodes and because of this the control circuit will not work properly or will turn off. If the power supply voltage of the PWM controller drops below the threshold value. But with an external power supply we don't face such problems. The transformer of galvanic isolation is wound on a ferret ring which is taken from a non-working computer power supply. In computer power supplies, an input choke is wound on such rings. Yellow, white and other rings, which stand at the output as a group stabilization throttle, will not work. The material is different. We need exactly ferret with magnetic permeability from 1500 to 3000. The dimensions of the core I used are now in front of you. The transformer consists of three windings, the primary and two secondary. All windings reel up at once. Wire for all windings is the same, may have a diameter from 0.3 to 0.5 mm. The primary winding is 20 turns, the secondary windings are 15. It is important correct connecting of the beginnings of all windings. They are indicated by dots both on the circuit and on the board. If we confuse the beginning and the end of the windings, the circuit will not work. You can check the assembled board using an oscilloscope or by controlling a small 12 volt low power incandescent lamps to the output windings. The lamps will lead if everything is correct. The control board and the device as a whole are supplied with a smooth start. The delay is determined by the capacity of the indicated capacitor. The resistor sets the dead time, that is, after closing one power transistor, there is a pause and then the second transistor is triggered. This option gives the control system extra time to discharge the power transistor gates and securely lock them. But in my case, the control transformer does a great job. Plus, the transistors aren't the much powerful and they are easy to manage. As a result, dead time resistor was excluded from my board. The mains filter, rectifier and capacitors of half bridge are located on a separate board. There is nothing special, a pair of 200 volt, 560 microfarad capacitors connected to the mint point, an 8 amperes bridge, a fuse and a thermistor to limit the charging current of the capacitors. All this can be found in old computer power units. Also, here is a film separation capacitor. On the third board are power transistors with a system of protection against short circuits. Protection is realized on the basis of a current transformer and works as follows. The transformer has two windings. Primary winding is just one turn of thick wire, which is connected in series with the primary winding of the under test transformer and the secondary winding has 100 to 120 turns with a tap from the middle. The voltage from the secondary winding of the transformer is rectified and then it goes to the load resistor. When we accidentally close the output of the under test transformer, a voltage drop is formed on this coil which leads to an increase of the voltage on the secondary winding of the current transformer and consequently the voltage drop on the load resistor increases. If the drop is more than 2.5 volts, the microcircuit is blocked because this voltage is applied directly to the protection input of the chip. The chip internal driver keys will close and as a result, power transistors of the power supply will close. We can adjust the protection operation current using a voltage divider in the form of a trimming multi-turn resistor. I think everything is clear about the number of turns of the windings of the current transformer. It is wound on a ferret ring exactly the same way as in the case of a matching transformer. Protection will be very useful if you need to check the characteristics of the under test transformer to its fullest, when the input limiting lamp is excluded from the circuit. Power transistors are installed on a common radiator through heat conducting pads, that is to say, the substrates of transistors haven't contact with the radiator. Here I decided to put 8 amperes and channel field effect transistors at 900 volts. It is possible less, but this decision has reasons. 
The fact is that on the primary winding of a power transformer, we will have voltage spikes due to self-induction. Self-induction voltage is sometimes greater than the supply voltage of the circuit, and this can kill the power transistors. In principle, a snubber is needed in order to damp spikes. But the snubber needs to be calculated depending on the operating frequency of the circuit and the parameters of the transformer. In this case, we don't have a power supply unit operating at a fixed frequency, but a tester which will work with different transformers and at different frequencies, so snubber is unsuitable. I prefer to simply use higher voltage power transistors in the hope that they wouldn't fail. How long they can work can't be said, but over 10 different transformers have already been tested at this device. Yet, there have been no problems, even taking into account the fact that stress tests with increased supply voltage were carried out. A few words about the current transformer. At first, the secondary winding is wound, consisting of two equal shoulders of 60 turns. Windings should be faced connecting the beginning of one with the end of the other. On the circuit, the beginning is indicated by a dot. The wire can be with a diameter of 0.15 to 0.25 mm. Both shoulders are wound at the same time to minimize the spread of characteristics. The turns must be stretched along the ring. Try to reel up regularly without overlaps. After reeling up, the winding is insulated with a tape or something else. Or it is best to fill it with resin. It will be beautiful and reliable. The primary winding have only one turn which isn't complete. The wire diameter is 1.25 mm. With the help of such a test device, it is possible to find the optimal and limiting operating frequency of the core. Experimentally select the snubber elements and its efficiency. If necessary, the incandescent lamp at the input can be removed and the transformer should be fully loaded for thermal measurements and estimation of the overall power of the core. We can also study the influence of the skin effect at different frequencies. The device also provides the ability to customize the oscillating circuit of induction, heating systems and much more. With the help of additional consoles device can be used as a powerful high frequency AC source with adjustable power and frequency. The disadvantage of this particular test device is the absence of measuring points for adjustment works and lack of built-in measuring instruments, such as a frequency meter, although in my case this is not critical since mainly oscilloscope will be used, which will allow show everything I need. This is probably all. If this video was interesting, you can share it with your friends. All additional information can be found in the description. If additional questions arise, ask them in our official group. The link is also in the description. Now I say goodbye, until next video. With you was Kaysian TV.